Let's talk about Linux distributions and which ones I use and why. I'm going to talk a little about my thoughts on Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, CentOS, Red Hat, and Arc Linux. If you visit distrowatch.com, you'll find hundreds of distros, and many of them are just derivatives of Debian, Fedora, or Arc. I can't cover everything, so I'm going to stick with the ones that I have personal experience with myself, and I won't be talking about some other well-known distros like Gentoo or SUSE just because I don't have any experience with them. There are some specialized distros like Kali that are great for penetration testers, but I'm going to focus more on general distributions that can be used for desktop, server, and IoT purposes. Let me get started with Arc Linux. This one has gained a lot of popularity. It's a rolling release distro, so it's always sporting the latest releases. It doesn't have an automated installer, and it requires you to follow instructions on the command line. This is one big attraction to a lot of people. Some because they learn a lot, others because they feel it provides them with elite status because they partitioned their disk without using a GUI or they set their time zone using a symlink. I think everyone should install it at least once for the learning experience, definitely. I have used it as a daily driver before on my desktop, and I've just found it's not as stable as I wanted, even for a desktop. The upgrades would periodically break things and you have to go to the website and read how to fix it and do some surgery on your machine and I didn't like that hassle. The wiki though is really amazing and full of useful information for any distribution. Arch Linux though, or Arch Linux, I know that's the right way to say it. They've contributed a lot to the Linux world. But the big downside to me is that freedom is not a priority. In fact, they really have no interest in the philosophy of freedom. And they allow proprietary and non-free software in their main repos without really any separation or distinction. A lot of people end up using Arch because they think it's the leanest distribution out there with the minimal install. But the truth is all the other distros like Debian and Fedora, they provide minimal installs that you can use. So it doesn't make a huge difference. You don't have to install the desktop with Debian or Fedora. And personally, whenever I install Arch, I just wish there was an installer script. I mean, I know I could write one, but I'd much rather pick my time zone from a list rather than have to search a directory in Simlink files. There are some Arch Linux derivatives that have nice installers, but I don't, I'm just not interested in those distributions. One thing worth mentioning is the, the Arch user repository, the AUR, which is a collection of community contributed packages. It's convenient, but it's not the most trustworthy thing, although they do have the concept of trusted users that contribute. Next, let's talk about Debian and Ubuntu. Ubuntu is built on top of Debian, and it's going to have a bit more refinement, which makes it a great starter distro for a lot of people. It's really approachable. However, for me personally, Ubuntu has broken my trust. They started installing Amazon apps by default and sending your local searches out to the internet. They rolled a lot of that back, but the trust has been lost. I just don't know what they would put in it again if they were willing to do that the first time. So there's not an emphasis on freedom or privacy at all. And that's just kind of a deal breaker for me. Debian, on the other hand, does emphasize freedom and they only contain free software in the main repos. There are non-free repos that you can opt into if you really want to, but at least they're distinct and separate. I personally like the Debian installer, having the text-based and the graphical option. You can choose to do a minimal install, just like you would do with Arch, but you also have the option to install the graphical desktop or any of the alternative graphical desktops, all with the same disk. There's also a three DVD set that you can download and burn that comes with all the packages, not all of them, but most popular packages for offline installation, which is a great option for people who don't have much internet or any internet. One downside of the installer is that it's only an installer. It's not a live disk, so you don't have a full OS to try things out in. Debian does not come with any of the proprietary firmware drivers, so there's a big chance your wireless network card's not gonna work. 
and you'll need those drivers to get that to work. Debian has a slow release cycle with no specific time, so the packages can be a bit stale. But the flip side to that is it's really stable and it's a great choice for servers. Although by default, it's not the most secure distro for servers because you have to explicitly set up SE Linux and a local firewall if you want it. If you install Debian in a virtual box, you'll have to take an extra step to install the guest editions because again, it doesn't come with a lot of the firmware packages. Also, Debian has a five year long term support, so long term support for their, their releases. And another thing from my experience is I found that making Debian packages, the .deb, was much easier than creating an RPM for other distros, but I've heard many people had the reverse experience. So that leads me into Fedora, CentOS, and Red Hat. This family of distributions has a lot more security features turned on by default, so it makes a better server. For example, SE Linux policies and Firewall D are turned on by default. You can set these up again on Debian, but it takes more work. Fedora is a community project. Red Hat is built on top of Fedora and CentOS was essentially Red Hat, but without the commercial support. CentOS used to be the go-to distro for servers. It was like Debian in that it had a very slow release cycle, but it was incredibly stable. Additionally, CentOS had more security emphasis than Debian, making it a better choice for servers. After IBM bought Red Hat though, the death of CentOS was announced and CentOS Stream was introduced. And my understanding is that's gonna be more of a rapidly changing, almost development version of Red Hat. And it doesn't have the stability that the old CentOS did. What I'm now seeing is that people are abandoning CentOS and moving towards Debian or Ubuntu. My guess was that IBM thought if they killed CentOS, people would upgrade and start buying Red Hat for the stability and support. But I've seen more people moving towards Ubuntu than buying Red Hat. But that's just my limited experience. For most of us as individuals, Red Hat doesn't even matter because we're not interested in paying hundreds or thousands of dollars a year to use it. Fedora's installer, unlike Debian, defaults to the graphical installer in a live disk environment. In most cases, this really doesn't matter though. I do wish the installer had more options like setting up your host name though. Overall, the installer is a breeze just like Debian's. Fedora does emphasize freedom and only has free software in their repositories, but you can, in, you can opt in to the non-free software if you want to. Fedora does make exceptions for non-free firmware though. If you're installing Fedora on a laptop though, you might really appreciate that because it'll mean the difference between your wireless card working or not working. Fedora also comes with the VirtualBox guest edition, so if you install it in VirtualBox, it'll be all ready to go. Fedora releases every six months and doesn't have the type of long-term support that Debian does, but it does have very up-to-date software. And it also has many releases, including ARM versions. I really like Fedora, and I even made my own remix, as they call them. Uh, I called it DevNix. I don't even use it myself, to be honest. I did it more as an exercise, and I learned a lot about customizing Fedora, GNOME, and the Anaconda installer that it has. So which ones do I use and recommend? I recommend Debian and Fedora. I think either one is a great choice, and they both have their pros and cons. They both value and emphasize freedom, which is a critical aspect in my criteria. They are my two favorite distros, and I use both of them. These days I tend to use Fedora for desktop and laptop machines, and I use Debian for servers for the stability and long-term support. So what do you think? What distros do you like? I'm curious to see what everybody else uses. I know there's a lot of different ones out there and everybody's got their favorites. Recently I've heard some people recommend Void Linux. I haven't tried that one yet, but I have tried a lot in the past and Debian and Fedora, the ones that I settle on.